Just picking up on that point, sorry, just picking up on that point, you've touched on the different regulatory environments. People often talk about the European Union, for instance, as if it's a homogenous unit. Just talk us through just kind of how complicated that can be and how other regulatory environments will shape and warp how these kind of investigations move forward. You're actually absolutely right. I mean, it's amazing to me when people say, well, what do I do in the EU? I find that, like, no one asks me, well, what do you do in the United States on human resources issues? Because that's all handled state by state. And right. there's, a, there's a very complex matrix for that. The same thing is true globally. And it's true within the EU. Each member state has implemented the data protection regulation in its own specific way. Now, there's also a bunch of other laws that apply. There's banking laws. Many of the states have very different banking laws, there are surveillance issues under the Telecommunications Act, there are labor law issues that can be implemented. So we always find that it's best to have an expert who knows the specific jurisdiction. Don't try to run this entirely from a central location, assuming that you know enough, because I know the UK, I know France, or I know UK and France, so I know Austria or Italy. That's just, I think, a, a mistake waiting to happen. And, and picking on, up on, on Jim's point, the plan is key, right? These are time-sensitive matters, but they're not matters to panic on. Um, you need to put forth a plan about how I'm going to ingest all of this data. And data does not equate to information. There can be a lot of useless data lying about that can clog your system. And so you need to come up with both, I mean, I get to work with experts who really understand what investigation's all about, who's conducted many investigations around many different sectors on many different merits. But there's also a very specific expertise around ingesting data, parsing data, and letting the right data rise to the top. And this is crucial in, in cross-border investigations. A, a lot more data. There are a lot more laws to run afoul of. But many of those laws talk about not looking at stuff you don't need to look at. And I find that um, companies that panic or law firms that panic tend to put their arms as broad as they can get bring as much to themselves as they can, right. and start trying to look at every single document. You can't look through every single document. That's never going to work. But also now you've looked at a, brought a lot of stuff that you really didn't need to look at, and you've probably run afoul of processing laws and transfer laws that you really didn't need to. So let's prioritize. Let's sift. Let's see if we can use um, some of the great technologies that are out there to look for signals within the data without actually looking at the documents or the email or the text messages to see, well, if this is a problem about people talking that shouldn't be talking or are um, doing insider trading or, or we have bribery issues, let's see who's talking to who. I can find a pattern in the data, focus in on the bad nodes, and then look at those. Not only reducing my costs, but I'm, I'm looking at the right information first so I can really assess the problem. Um, people who dive right in tend to get lost in the data that doesn't have any meaning. Yeah, absolutely. Um,